what motivated us to create the, the, the system that we have here is um, a, a variety of factors. One of the key factors is the nature of the land that we've got, uh, which is essentially non-flat. You know, our land looks like this. It comes all down to the creek. So um, it, we're uh, at a very uh, high premium how we use any of the flat land that we've got. So a windrowing system like uh, Otis has talked about was not suitable for our needs because our system had to be very compact and had to be uh, expeditious, all right? Um, so the, you know, the nature of our system is that we can process uh, a fairly large amount of material fairly quickly in a limited amount of space. Uh, what further motivated us is that it was costing us roughly $500 a month to truck the, um, I don't want to call it waste, but the nutrient outputs from uh, our horses out of here. And uh, we saw the opportunity to, to actually turn that around and create a revenue stream. Um, and so we did what you know any uh, entrepreneurial near Silicon Valley person might do, went to the internet, looked around, see what was going on, uh, uh, found a system that we thought we could imitate. Uh, I'm not uh, a construction kind of guy. I'm much more of a Silicon Valley kind of guy, but uh, my son and I constructed our, our first system and it hung together for a while uh, and, and proved to us that we could compost, uh, like it said that you're supposed to be able to. We didn't know, we tried. And then uh, with the help of the RCD, uh, we uh, created a, um, a much more bulletproof system that you'll see today. So the other thing I'll tell you is that uh, as we go around, what I'm gonna explain to you is that pretty much everything we do here is uh, key to our composting system. So how we feed, uh, how we uh, clean the stalls, the bedding that we use, all the equipment that we use, it's all key to doing the composting, all right? We have about half the horses here are our own horses and half the horses here are boarded horses. And uh, often it takes somebody who's uh, boarding their horse here a while to adjust to how little bedding we use. Um, and that it's not this, like you said, this big fluffy pile of shavings. Instead, it's a fairly thin layer of uh, essentially sawdust, okay? Um, if you, and for the reason he said, if you ever watch somebody pick the stall where there's all this big bedding and, and the heavy sha shavings and looked at what they collected, you go, oh my God, it's all shavings. In essence, you know, what's happening is people are just throwing money away and they're debilitating their composting in the process. So um, this is, you know, we've tried a number of things. We even tried uh, the rice hulls. We've tried a number of things. This is what we've uh, decided we're happiest with. We've sized everything for this operation. So for instance, our tractor is just big enough to be able to lift those pallets full of uh, bedding and the pallets full of feed. Uh, small enough also to make it through uh, the aisle we just walked up through the, through the barn. Uh, and actually, this is kind of like Goldilocks because we first had a bigger tractor and then we had a smaller tractor and this one turns out to be <laughs> just right. <laughs> so uh, we have trucks that come in, you know, uh, semi-trucks that come in delivering uh, the bedding and uh, the tractor is designed so that you can switch the bucket for forks. We primarily primarily feed cubes, they look like this. They're compressed uh, alfalfa and oat, I think. And they come in these big sacks. We have, these are the, the composting bins. And here, you know, we've been able to take advantage of our property where we can drive around to the back side of the bins to unload the material into the bins. You dump it in there. You blow air through it, you open the door, you truck it out. Um, so uh, once every half hour, the blower comes on and the timer is adjustable for how, what percentage of the half hour the blower is on. 
and it's typically on for about 15% of that half hour. So, in other words, about five minutes. Um, there's, at, at the bottom of each bin, these, these bins are on a, a concrete slab, and then at the bottom of each bin there's a uh, pallet-looking plenum that we built out of redwood, okay? Uh, the redwood resists deteriorating uh, from the exposure to the, to the uh, manure. Um, and so basically, if you were to look at right here, you'd see that there's four pipes. There's one four-inch pipe that goes down and up into the bottom of each bin, and then the plenum distributes the air throughout the bin. The air just comes up from the bottom. So there's one blower blowing into um, a six-inch pipe, and then there's four four-inch pipes that come off of that, one going to each bin. This bin here was recently emptied, all right, and we're starting to fill it, right? And then once that's full, we'll empty this bin and start filling it. And then when that's full, da 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 right. And it takes about a week to fill a bin. So in other words, the material sits in the bins for roughly four weeks, right? You know, this is in there for a week, that for a week, that for a week, that for a week, and then we start all over again, right? We move the material with the, the truck and trailer that are uh, down a ways. Um, it holds eight yards. So these bins are sized where uh, there are two loads, two eight yard loads per bin. Uh, we sell the material and we deliver it. So if you're, you know, if you're thinking about composting and being able to sell your compost, uh, you have to be able to deliver it. Um, at least I think you have to be able to deliver it. Having people come to get it uh, has several negative issues, especially with your neighbors. The, you know, the less traffic you have coming to your property, the better. We sell it uh, eight yards at a time. Um, it's roughly $200 for a load uh, delivered within reasonable radius of right here. Uh, it doesn't make sense to deliver a small load. I mean, basically, you want a small load, that's fine. It's still $200. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. you know, why, why, why don't you get a neighbor and then split it, you know? Right. People doing organic farming will use it. Um, it's, you know, it's um, suitable for organic farming, the way we're processing it. There's basically two kinds of composting, aerobic and anaerobic. So aerobic means with air, anaerobic means without air. And uh, with air, the aerobic microbes take over, and the byproduct of aerobic uh, composting is just CO2, carbon dioxide, and water. Uh, the byproducts, as you know, Otis was mentioning, of anaerobic is ammonia and methane. So you know, you hear about people talking about getting methane and using it. Well, it's better not to produce the methane and and keep the nitrogen. Uh, available for the you know the fertilizing capability of your compost. Uh, so, yeah, in this system, um, it we don't have to add water. It and it, it stays plenty moist enough. Uh, we uh, I mentioned notice earlier in the summertime when the material is drier, uh, we'll add water as we're putting it in. But then we don't have to continuously add water uh, after we get it going. The advantage of this system is minimum labor, right? You know, virtually, you know, almost zero labor. The disadvantage of any batch system is that they're non-uniform, all right? So our way of addressing that is that when it's done here, we move it uh, to an aging area. And in the process of moving that, it gets stirred up some and it'll complete up there and deal with whatever, you know, uh, unevenness there is in the process. We have uh, two barns and some outdoor pens. Uh, everywhere is, is matted so that uh, in the winter we're not pounding the manure into, into mud. Um, makes for you know, really much more rapid cleanup. Um, the whole area gets cleaned every day and it's done in about three to four hours. 
uh, by one guy. Make it convenient because if you put the bunker somewhere where it's just a pain to get the stuff to or it's raining and this and a lot of folks that we've gone to their properties and helped them they've used this type of thing where they can bring it up dump it in fill up their piles and then just when building bins if you're doing a smaller system you made a good point make sure if you're going to turn it with a tractor that the tractor fits <laughs> and then if you have your roof that it's high enough to lift right. up and come back because we've had folks we, we've had Oops. folks build the things and these are the results so this is what you learn as you go and make the mistakes some folks don't even want to compost the manure but they're just building for water quality purposes a storage area so they have a concrete bunker they just put all the manure there and they end up hauling it or giving it away to people um, if you haul it, some interesting ways to just haul it if you want to give it to somebody else are have your truck backed up against a ramp and you just put the stuff directly yeah. in the truck. When the truck's full, take it to, you know, if you're in Ben Lomond to the transfer station or preferably to someone's place that can use it. Technically, you're supposed to be able to put, if you just have one horse and you live in Santa Cruz County, you can put your manure in your green waste. The problem becomes if it's really wet, it's heavy yeah. and if the bins are too heavy they won't take them so it's just maybe let it dry out but you can put it in your green waste there's some conflicting information on their website to what they tell us that you can do so yeah. in the ideal world we're putting material in on the left side taking it out on the right side and then when the left side is full and the right side's empty we move the left side material over to the right side which takes which means that the material that we first put in on the left side is now at the front on the right side and would be the first stuff we take out. So it averages out then you know, how long material's in there. And part of what you can see is uh, that it's shrunk down. So when this material was first put in there, it was put in as high as I could possibly stack it. And as it's composting, it's being reduced down. And you can also see that, that it, it is broken down, you know, it doesn't look like horse apples anymore.